Hi, welcome to Sega Your Review. So in this video, I would like to talk to you about the different types of 5G speeds that the different cell phone carriers offer, and also to go over the plans that each of them offer to see which one is the best one for you if you're looking to switch companies or to stay with a company and to get the best plan that fits your needs. This video hopefully will do that for you. So unlike the past where you had pretty much one speed when it came to your cell phone service, right? Before we have 4G, 4G LTE, then they added a 4G LTE Plus and different names and things that companies give their networks in order to attract customers. Right now, everybody's talking about 5G. So 5G is supposed to give you the best speeds that you could ever imagine so much faster than anything else. You'll be like, wow, this is too fast, kind of thing. And also, they cover the country. Everybody has the most coverage than everybody else and blah, 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 blah. But as we know, this is all marketing talk that doesn't really mean anything unless you actually are in a specific network using the service and able to experience if what these carriers are telling you is true or not. So let's break down the three different 5G speeds that each of the carriers offer. And to do that, we're going to use this image of uh, what I'm assuming is a cake. Kind of looks like a cake from T-Mobile. And they have it broken down in three. As you can see on the top, you have urban. In the middle, you have mid-band metro and low-band nationwide. So let's start with that urban uh, name that they have uh, provided to that little tiny piece of their cake. That technically will be considered high band 5G or millimeter wave 5G. And it has a reason on why they made it so small because it's related to high band 5G millimeter wave, which as the name says it, millimeter, means that you need to be very close in order, means that you need to be very close to the antenna in order to receive the benefits of how fast that 5G millimeter wave is. When the carriers talk about super fast speeds, better than Wi-Fi and internet and blah, 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 they are talking about this millimeter wave. What they don't tell you though, is that in order to get the fastest speeds, to get the benefits of millimeter wave technology is you need to stay within 80 feet of that tower in order to get the benefit. So they can get away with saying that you can get super fast speeds with 5G, even if technically isn't true, unless you are like right here next to that tower with your phone. So that's the first piece of the 5G cake. So the other problem also with these waves is that they cannot penetrate walls very well. So if you are in a room where you have the tower next to you and you go behind the wall, a lot of times on examples that people have given is they lose the speed that they otherwise could have gotten when they were right next to the power, right next to the tower unobstructed. So that's the other problem with millimeter wave. It is very, 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 very good but it has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of drawbacks. Now let's look at that mid-band metro piece in the middle. And that one, as you can see, is a little bigger. Well, not a little bigger. It's a lot bigger than millimeter wave or high band 5G. So mid-band 5G is six times faster than LTE. It also has some of the limitations that high band 5G has, which is if there's buildings in the way, the power and the speed of that signal will drop. So Midband 5G will allow you to cover a little more space than that millimeter wave can do. And finally, the last piece of the cake, we have low band nationwide. So low band 5G is 20% faster than current LTE, which if you are actually using it with your phone, you might not notice that huge of a difference between what 4G LTE can give you and 5G can give you. I mean, 5G low band can give you. It also depends on how fast your actual 4G LTE signal is and how much speeds are you getting out of that. It also will affect how fast that 5G signal is. Why is the low band 5G the primary 5G 
signal that you will be using on your 5G capable phone. It's because it has obviously a further reach, which is why it's nationwide. It, 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 can, it carries obviously less data on it, but it also has a higher penetration than the other two 5G bands that we just went over. So if you are in a building uh, surrounded by walls and things like that, that 5G signal that you will get most likely will be that low band. 5G. Right now, carriers are mostly relying on low band and mid band. So your speeds will vary between those two, depending on where you are. And that difference that you might see between 5G speeds versus your 4G speeds might be negligent, which is one of the reasons why I keep saying that 5G isn't really ready. But you know, you can only go against what carriers are doing for so long. At this point, you will have a 5G phone whether you like it or not. Now, with all this 5G talk, what are the best plans for you? And also, what is the best carrier for you? And let's keep in mind that I'm going to be talking about three carriers here. T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. Sadly, Sprint technically does not exist anymore because it's part of T-Mobile. So there's no reason to talk about Spring at all. I will not be going into Google Fi either if you're a Google Fi user. I'm not sure that they are offering any 5G coverage. I'm a Google Fi user and um, I haven't heard or seen anything about 5G. I really don't need 5G right now either. So, all right, so let's start with T-Mobile. All right, so here we have the three plans that T-Mobile offers. So we have the first one, which is Essentials. Then we have Magenta and Magenta Plus. As you can see, it goes 60, 70, 85, and that's one for one line. Um, obviously, it goes up depending on how many more lines you add. So let's look at what every uh, what they offer across the board. So you have unlimited talk and text across the board, unlimited 4G LTE data on our network, and unlimited is across the board technically uh, if you have the cheaper one, though, it tells you congestion data prioritization may lower your speeds, which means that the other people on the other two plans on the 70 and the $85 one will have priority over you, meaning that they will slow down your connection. So if you are trying to do something on your phone, it may take you forever to do it because the other people on the other plans are using the network at that time, which really, really sucks because you're still giving money to this company, you're still paying this company, and they shouldn't punish you for trying to save some money. Then we have here uh, 5G access and no extra cost. Actually, let me go back to the unlimited 4G. Let's see what it says here on the speeds. So during congestion, customers using more than 50 gigs a month and essential customers may notice lower Speeds than other customers due to data prioritization. Video typically streams on smartphone, tablet at 480p, up to 1080p with Magenta Plus. If you're using more than 50 gigs a month, I guess they're going to screw you over. Let's look at the 5G access and no extra cost across the board. What does it say? Uh, capable device require coverage not available in some areas, while 5G access won't require a certain plan or feature. Some uses services might. Okay. Scan blocking protection across the board. Netflix on us. You don't get Netflix on us if you have the cheaper plan, but then you get Netflix basic one standard definition screen and Netflix standard two HD screens. Standard definition? Standard definition? This is 2021. What do you mean? Who's watching Netflix on standard definition? Come on. Can you just give them one HD screen? One HD versus two. Wouldn't that make more sense? T-Mobile, why do you treat your customers like red headed step children just because they want to save some money? Then we have mobile hotspot, unlimited 3G data on uh, the cheaper one. Then you have 3G, uh, sorry, three gigabytes or 4G LTE data, then unlimited at 3G. And then you have 20 gigs of 4G LTE data, then unlimited uh, uh, 3G. Then we have T-Mobile Tuesdays, which I don't know what it is across the board. And then you have dedicated customer care team. T-Mobile Tuesdays, what is that? Free staff discounts and more with the T-Mobile Tuesdays app. All right, and I guess you got to download an app and get some stuff. Unlimited doesn't really mean unlimited. It's unlimited up to a point. 
um, they can decide to lower your speeds once you hit a certain cap. All carriers have a cap. Once you hit that cap, they drop your speeds. How is that unlimited? If you're paying money for a certain speed, goes beyond me, but hey, they can get away with it, so they're doing it. So taking a quick look here, it looks like their cap is 50 gigs a month. So right here, 50 gigs a month may not as reduced speeds until next billing cycle. Those are the plans for T-Mobile. All right, next we have Verizon. And Verizon actually has more plans than the other two carriers. And they actually have a little more interesting uh, explanations about their 5G network. So as we have the Start Unlimited, that's $70, um, includes 5G nationwide, and it says 5G nationwide available in 2,700 plus cities. 5G nationwide access requires a 5G network capable device. 4G LTE, you have Disney Plus for six months, Apple Music for six months, and Discovery Plus for six months. So you get a lot of perks on this one in the basic service, which the other two companies don't. So I will say good on Verizon for that. Uh, we have two different $80 plans and a $90 plan. So let's look at that pay, play more unlimited and the do more unlimited, what the difference is between the two $80 plans. So they're both $80, both have five, what they call 5G total access, which is 5G ultra wideband and 5G ultra wideband. And the same thing here, the disclosure is 5G ultra wideband available only in parts of select cities. 5G ultra wideband access requires a 5G capable device inside the 5G ultra wideband coverage area. So this is what Verizon is calling the high band 5G or the millimeter wave 5G. They're calling it ultra wide band. And it's interesting that they're including this specific type of 5G coverage in their plan. Because if you notice, the other two companies that we just looked at, T-Mobile and AT&T, just talk about 5G as a blanket thing. They don't have a distinction. Verizon here does. Then we have 5G nationwide, premium network access. Uh, I don't know what that is. What is that? Get access to 50 gigs of 5G nationwide, 4G LTE premium data per month. So I guess if you exceed, I guess it's like T-Mobile, if you go over 50 gigs per month, they will cap your speeds. I guess unlimited is not always unlimited. We have 4G LTE, unlimited mobile hotspot, 15 gigs of 5G nationwide, and 4G LTE data. Hey. So you can use 5G as well for your older devices. Plan perks are Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN Plus included. Doesn't say for how long, I'm assuming forever. Apple Music for six months and Discovery Plus for 12 months. Now let's look at the other $80 plan, which looks exactly the same if you look up to the plan perks is where things change. So the other $80 plan you have Disney Plus for six months, Apple Music for six months. So you lose some of the other entertainment services here or perks. You have Discovery uh, Plus for six months. Again, this is 12 months. Then you get 50% of unlimited connected device plans and 600 gigs of Verizon Cloud Storage. Okay, so I guess if you want to use Verizon Cloud Storage, you get 600 gigs included on your $80, but that doesn't seem worth it to me. Let's look at the $90 one. So $90 gets you 5G total access, same thing. Pretty much everything the same. Where things change looks like, uh, let's look at the premium access. Uh, 50 gigs, same thing as the other ones. Right here, it looks like you get unlimited mobile hotspot, 30 gigs of 5G or 4G LTE, Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN included, Apple Music included, uh, Discovery Plus for 12 months, 50%. So on the $90 plan, you get everything that you get between the unlimited, between the play more unlimited and the do more unlimited. So $10 more gets you instead of picking and choosing. So there you have it. Those are the three companies and uh, three different plans that they offer. We also talked a little bit about 5G. Hopefully you understand what the difference on each tier of 5G is and also understand that 
even though they're saying that you're going to get super speed, super fast, it's not necessarily the truth, depending on where you are, of course. Does this video help you make a decision if you are in the market of getting a new phone or picking a new plan? Let me know in the comment section. That's it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. And thank you very much for watching.